Hey, what's up everyone? It's Asad here. Welcome back to the 52 Quarts channel. In this video, I'll be teaching you a staple sleight of hand technique. This is called the glide. I should have taught this to you uh, years ago. I don't know why I didn't, to be honest, but uh, better late than never. This is um, just an extremely practical method for secretly switching out one card for another which comes in handy within the context of a bunch of different tricks and effects. Um, quite a few of you may already be familiar with the glide. Even if that's the case, you may want to stay tuned because after I teach the basic handling, I'm going to be teaching um, a slightly more advanced modified handling that has some nice benefits. And you may, have, uh, you may not be familiar with that. So there will be a timestamp down below if you would like to skip to that section. But if you're learning the glide for the first time, I would recommend learn the basic version first and then you can move on to that. Um, I'm also going to be showing you a really nice practicing drill that can be used to improve your technique. Um, and that can also, that principle that I'm going to be talking about can be applied to a lot of different um, techniques as well. So yeah, let's get into it. Let's go behind the card table and I'll teach you how to do the glide. This video is brought to you by Mint Playing Cards. This is a brand of cards that started a few years ago with magicians specifically in mind. They feature a super classy, timeless design, the backs have an intuitive marking system built into them, and the cards are printed on a premium Q1 crushed cardstock and then coated with an air cushion finish for optimal handling. Each deck is packaged in a beautiful tuck case that is sure to look great in your card collection. If you want to learn more about the Mint playing cards, you can check them out at mint52.com. All right, I'll start by giving just a brief overview of what's actually happening in this move, and then we'll dive deeper and I'll go into some of the finer points and details on how to do this really well and to make it as deceptive as possible. But here's the gist of it. You're showing the card. Let's not use a joker. You're showing the card uh, at the bottom of the deck. And then when you turn your hand back over under the guise of the deck and in the process of pulling that card out and dealing it to the table, what's really happening is with my left hand, I'm pushing that bottommost card to the right, which exposes the card right above it. And then I'm simply pulling out that second from the bottom card and dealing it to the table. That's all there really is to it. Very simple idea. But when done well, it's an extremely deceptive card switch and illusion. So let's now dive deeper and uh, I'll show you how to do it uh, as smoothly and deceptively as possible. Okay, so you're gonna start with the deck in your standard left hand mechanics grip, and then you're gonna transfer over to what we call an overhand grip, also known as a billet grip. So that's thumb at the back edge, middle ring and pinky on the front edge, and I like to curl my first finger on top like so. Once you're in this position to display the bottom card, I'm gonna turn my wrist, I'm gonna turn my hand palm up and let them see the card. Let them uh, take notice of it, remember it. Uh, just depending on whatever you're doing in the context of this move. After they've gotten a moment to look at the card, now you're going to turn the hand back over, turn the wrist back over, and here's what's happening. With the tip of my uh, left middle finger, I'm going to contact that bottom card right around this area, okay? And um, I'm doing it pretty much immediately after I turn my hand palm down. I'm pushing to the right. And it doesn't take much. So I, the way that I like to do is I don't push it um, straight to the right. I push it at an angle. I kind of swivel that card. So my ending position is this. And this is nice because if you angle it like so, well, one, you know, it, it makes it much more difficult to notice. It's a more minor um, separation because um, you really only need the corner. But also the really nice thing is that when you angle it like this, I can feel the corner of this bottommost card contact my thumb and the other corner contact my pinky. And that's when I know I'm in position and ready to do the move. Okay, so you're going to be able to feel it. You don't need any visual aid here. As soon as I can feel those two corners at those contact points, I'm good to go. That leaves enough space. In the beginning, maybe you'll want to push it even more just to kind of get used to it. But really, once you've practiced, all you need is about that much. You just need access to the index, the pip of that second card. Once I'm in this position, again, with the pad of my left middle finger, I'm contacting that second from the bottom card. And then I'm sliding it to the left, 
Um, and then once enough of that card is exposed, I pinch it with my left thumb and deal it straight to the table. Okay? And then once you've completed the move, there's a little bit of a cleanup because you still have this card that is separated. Um, not a big deal. All I'm going to do at this point is once again transfer the deck from my right hand overhand grip back to a left hand mechanics grip. And in the process, I'm just curling my left hand fingers and I'm clean. The move is done. Okay. Um, let me uh, address a few problem areas that you may run into and uh, hopefully that'll help you out. All right, problem number one is sometimes you may have a difficult time actually sliding that card over and then pulling that second card out because the tip of your finger is just like too dry and it's hard to get enough grip or friction on the card. Solution is easy. Just to, if you ha suffer from extremely dry hands, you may just want to lick the tip of your middle finger uh, a little bit beforehand and then you'll be able to do it no problem, okay? Problem number two is when doing the move, when you're in the process of pulling out the second card, what may happen is, uh, let me try to give you an example. Uh, maybe like a, a few more cards also start to slide out. Uh, let's see. Um, it's not happening right now, but it does happen sometimes. And that can also depend on the condition of the deck that you're working with. But yes, yeah, see like when I'm pulling it out, you may have a few other cards kind of um, come out the side of the deck as well. And that uh, it's not a deal breaker or anything, but it does weaken the illusion a little bit. Ideally, when pulling out that card, it's only a single card that is seen coming out the side of that deck. So the solution for this, if you happen to run across the situation, is when I pinch the card hair, as soon as it comes out, also with the tip of my left thumb, I'm kind of pushing to the right on those bottommost cards right above the card that I'm pulling out. And that's going to help them stay in line and prevent them from coming out any further. All right, now I'll cover a bit of a more advanced handling, an improved handling that has some nice benefits. One of the um, difficulties of this move or one of the things that can make the illusion weaker is when turning the hand over and then doing the deal you hesitate here if there's an awkward pause or a break it, it doesn't look as good now you you know with enough practice you won't have to worry about that anymore but this alternative handling helps reduce the amount of time it takes to actually you know isolate that second from the bottom card and pull it out so here's the main difference you're going to start off again in your left hand in mechanics grip, but now when you transfer over to your right hand uh, overhand grip or billet grip, it's a slightly modified overhand grip. So typical overhand grip is something like this, where it's like the tips of your right hand fingers are on the front edge of the deck here. But now this time we're instead going to be taking a bit of a deeper grip. Okay, so now it's like the top front edge is contacting somewhere closer to kind of the first knuckle of those fingers. Okay, and what that allows you to do is it allows those three fingers to extend beyond the bottom of the deck, wrap around, and contact the bottommost card. Okay, so that's a great thing because now we show the card as we normally would, and when you're displaying the card, you don't want your fingers to be wrapped around and contacting the card yet, that might um, weaken the illusion a little bit. Just keep your fingers extended. But now when we turn the hand palm down, now we can curl those fingers in. And instead of using my left hand to push that bottom card to the right, I'm gonna be using those same fingers to do it for me. Okay, so let me kind of um, break that down a little bit. I'm wrapping and curling those fingers around until they contact the face of that card. And then it's just kind of a, I'm just, it's just kind of this motion. I'm kind of just squeezing or pulling um, on that bottom card in a right, in the right or age direction. You, you're just gonna have to play around with it. It's, it's not that complicated, but it's just gonna take a little bit of practice to learn how to apply that pressure in the right way. And it's gonna expose that second from the bottom card just as it did before, but now we can do it one-handed. And that allows us to come over and immediately deal out that second from the bottom card 
without having to take the time and effort to to manually push that card over with my left hand. So it just makes it a, a smoother illusion. It reduces the amount of time needed to do the, the secret move and will make it that much better, okay? So once again, you're just gonna have to play around with this. This, this is kind of hard for me to teach how to apply the pressure, but if you just, uh, let me try with my opposite hand, which I haven't practiced, that might help uh, me guide you guys. Yeah, you're, you're just pulling on it. And you know, if you do a couple of repetitions, you'll learn you know, the exact direction and amount of pressure you need to apply in order to get that card to um, swivel. But there's not that much to it. The rest of the move is exactly the same. You're gonna pull out the card just as you did before. And then I guess one other added benefit for doing it this way is that the cleanup action of squaring the bottom most card with the rest of the deck can also be done with one hand. You're just applying pressure in the opposite direction and boom, you don't need to transfer back to your left hand in order to square up the deck. You can keep the deck in your right hand if that helps out. Um, and in certain cases, it might. All right, here's a nice practice drill that you can use to refine your technique and make it look as deceptive as possible. And this is something I would recommend for a variety of different sleight of hand techniques is understand the motion that you're simulating. And then when doing the sleight of hand technique, match it as closely as you can. So in this case, the motion that we're simulating is turning our hand over, displaying the card, and then dealing the bottom card down to the table. So before you practice the actual sleight of hand, the glide or the move, practice actually doing it, actually removing the bottom card and dealing it down to the table and get comfortable, get used to the feeling of that, get used to the, the timing of it, the rhythm of it, and then when learning the, the move, match it, try to match it, okay? And then to take this drill to the next level, it's a great idea to alternate between actually doing the move you're simulating and then doing the move, okay? So for the first deal, we'll actually do the, the motion, dealing the bottom card down, and then the next time around, I'm gonna do the slight, okay? And then once again, I'm gonna do the, the actual motion dealing the bottom card, and the next time around, I'm gonna do the glide. And then you just go through, do that over and over again until they look as similar as you can make them. And that's just gonna improve your sleight of hand technique and uh, make it look a lot more natural and deceptive. All right, I hope you get some good use out of that move. If you like this video and you wanna learn more, please do hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for notifications of future videos. And uh, if you wanna check out a bunch of other free tutorials, go to 52cards.com slash library. Um, leave a comment down below, all that good stuff. I will see you in the next video. Take care and peace.